hear your voice and we would respond not just um, by the words we say, but in the actions we're willing to take. We pray, O oh God, that you would grow in our hearts compassion and empathy, that we would care not only for one another, but we would learn to care for ourselves, for you told us to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. So in all those ways, we're seeking to forgive ourselves and forgive one another, to have a fresh start in the new year. Lord, we pray that you would do this within us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Oh God, we thank you today for your son, Jesus Christ, for his love and grace, for the message of good news that we are going to hear. We thank you for this community, for our church, uh, and how we can grow together in our faith and in our service. We pray, O oh God, uh, that you would help us to become more like your son, Jesus, every day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And now, O oh God, we pray the prayer that your son taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
I'm not preaching uh, Amber's sermon today, but I hope you heard the committed to all you've begun on our Commitment Sunday of the year. I invite you to join me in our prayer of illumination as we prepare to hear the scripture of the day. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, may we hear with joy what you say to us this day. Amen. Our lesson and gospel are read together today. I read first in the first Peter, beginning in the first cha fourth chapter. Above all, love each other deeply, because love covers over a multitude of sins. Offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful servants of God's grace in its various forms. If anyone speaks, they should do so as one who speaks the very words of God. If anyone serves, they should do so with the strength God provides, so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. Now hear the words of the gospel, beginning in Matthew 28. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely, I am with you always to the very end of the age. May the Lord add blessing to the reading, hearing, and understanding of this, his holy word. Amen. Thank you, Susan. I guess as retired clergy, it's, it's hard to break the habit of wanting to, to preach. Um, I'll keep that in, in mind. Um, when I get to that point. <laughs> and I just want to say uh, thank you to Judy Garwell for being on the piano with us today. Um, while Kim and, and Marie have the Sunday off. Uh, and Robin, uh, great music choices for the choir today. That was, that's been great. Um, so I hope you are enjoying uh, this sort of cowboy theme that we've had during the stock show and, and rodeo. I hear this is stock show and rodeo weather. I mean, that's what everyone has said to me the last week or two. Well, you know, this is stock show and rodeo weather. And I'm like, OK. Uh, so that's January, I guess, around here. Uh, all of our country western references that we've had these last couple of weeks. I hope you've enjoyed that. Thank you to Becky and Linda for putting up all of uh, the decorations today, which I think are fun. Uh, so today we're talking about saddling up and getting ready to ride. Um, I'll be perfectly honest, um, I've only been on a horse a few times in my life. <laughs> Um, so, but I, those times, um, I know that saddle um, sure comes in handy. I, I kind of keeps you on the horse, doesn't it? <laughs> right? Um, even if it's not entirely comfortable. Um, I do hope this next weekend to finally go to the stock show, possibly the rodeo. My sister-in-law and niece will be in town, and she is the horse rider in the family. Uh, she's already, uh, she's eight years old and already winning ribbons. Um, and so we're going to have a good time um, with that this coming weekend. 
Um, but before we talk um, and uh, about saddling up and riding into the wild blue yonder, I want to talk about actually the opposite of saddling up, okay? Um, and, and I don't mean when you're like on the ground looking at the saddle thinking, how in the world am I supposed to get myself up there? <laughs> That's when you hope you have a, a, a ladder to get on, if you've ever, right? A step stool or something. I'm not talking about that. What is the, the opposite of saddling up and riding on? The opposite, I suggest, what is it? Falling off? Falling off. What, what are these guys? This is like the peanut gallery back here. The opposite of saddling up and riding on is circling the wagons. Circling the wagons. This is a strategy um, that was used by settlers to keep their livestock and families, you can kind of see a picture up here, keep their uh, livestock and families protected, right? And so they put the livestock and the kids like in the center I think that's, you know, I get it. That's a great strategy, right? Um, this would protect them from predators, from attacks while they were traveling out in the open. And so at night, they would circle the wagons, right, to be safe and, um, and to be protected. And I get this, um, this image and this strategy uh, for, for protection and for safety. Uh, there are sometimes very good and logical reasons to circle the wagons. Let's, let's just think of a few over the last years that we've had. Um, we are coming up in March on four years since the coronavirus pandemic shut down. Most of our community, our churches, do you remember that? I, I know you do. It might even feel like yesterday. But we're coming up on four years where um, we canceled everything, uh, from potluck meals to countless on-site ministries right here at Genesis at every other uh, church. That really felt like a circling the wagons kind of time. Right, where we hunkered down. In fact, the weather uh, this last few weeks might have felt like that, where you just wanted to hunker down and be warm. Um, in fact, um, we had a pr this last cold snap, I think, brought back um, a lot of traumatic memories for people from that ice storm where so many lost power. And, and you wish you could have huddled up with some others for some body heat and warmth, right? That was a circling the wagons kind of moment uh, during that ice storm. Thinking about the, the, the ice storm, that was 21, and, and the coronavirus pandemic in 20. In that amount of time, we've had a lot of other things going on in our nation, in our community that have made us want to seek protection and safety. Um, we had a very divisive, even frightening presidential election where um, the Capitol was, was attacked. Uh, we've had uh, numerous active shooter situations in our schools with our, with our children. Um, and even in our faith communities, it's been almost two years to the day since um, the Colleyville's um, Beth Israel synagogue shooting. Do you remember that? And so I get why there's that instinct to, to want to circle up, uh, to protect ourselves, uh, to be safe, that our loved ones, our children would be safe. Not to mention whatever challenges or obstacles that you've had in your personal life that have made you feel like you want to circle the wagons. This is actually a, a, a picture that I found on a website, a parenting website. 
And the author was actually advocating this. I mean, this was kind of a strategy she was offering for families, was circling the wagons. And this, this, this is her words, this author, not mine, shutting out the rest of the world to prioritize your family during a crisis. I get it. I get this instinct. I, I, I understand um, that this is a, a defense mechanism um, in, in a world that seems to, to have gone mad sometimes, or at least be out of our control. I get this defense mechanism, this instinct to protect and to stay safe. Are there times when, for public safety, we need to stay at home? Yes, there is. Are there times when dealing with unstable situations uh, or unstable people that you've got to create some boundaries? Yes, there are. Are there times when you literally just can't go on? And, and you're lucky if, if you can pull the covers over off your head and, and get out of bed? Yes, there are some times like that. But friends, circling the wagons, although it is a survival strategy, it is not the Jesus way. It is not the Jesus way. I am so proud of our church of Genesis that we have not fallen into this tendency, at least for longer than we have to for public safety's sake, to circle the wagons, to shut out the world. We have chosen the opposite of that. We have chosen, instead of focusing on protecting ourselves and our own interests, that we want to open ourselves, to open our building, to open our hearts and relationships to others in the community. We have opened ourselves to new adventures and new horizons. And instead of keeping our resources just for ourselves, we've chosen to share what we have with others. Uh, to share um, a meal with college students or, or homeless men or to um, share our space, our rooms, and our um, building. And instead of shutting out the world, here at Genesis, we are saying we want to embrace the world. We want to engage the world. This is the Jesus way. And I am, I am proud of Genesis and for you and for those who are, who are willing to commit to this way with us. Not the circling the wagons way, but opening ourselves up to the world. This is um, what our scripture lessons for, tell us for today, in particular our gospel lesson from Matthew, which is probably a very familiar scripture to you. Um, it's when uh, Jesus was, had been arrested and, and crucified and died and was, was buried. Um, and it seems like it would be that, that textbook example of, of just the, the perfect time uh, to hunker down, to protect yourself, right? And in fact, the disciples had this instinct, this survival strategy in mind. And, and they really did, they locked themselves in a room to protect themselves because they were afraid they were gonna be next. But as promised, God raised Jesus from the dead. Jesus walked out of the grave. He didn't, he didn't stay hunkered down. He walked out of the grave and back into the world. 
And there he found his disciples, starting first with the women, um, but then the twelve. Um, he sent in this text in Matthew, he sent word to them, actually. He didn't say, you know, go to a safe place where they're not going to bother you and where everything's going to be okay. He didn't tell them that. No, he told them, go back out into the open. Go back to Galilee, where we were doing all that ministry, where we were doing all those good things together. Go back to Galilee, to the mountainside, out in the open, where we were preaching and teaching and healing. It was not a moment to circle the wagons. Jesus was alive. It was a time to dance and to rejoice and to share the good news. He told them, basically, in Fort Worth terms, saddle up and go on out there again, right? Meet new people from every nation and tribe and tell them the good news of my saving love and grace. This is what Jesus told his disciples. And the best news of all of this is that Jesus would be with them, that he would be with them always. He would, if you will, ride out with them, <laughs> out into the countryside. Friends, to follow Jesus into the wild blue yonder, as we have been talking about, to, to share this message, this good news of y'all means y'all, that everyone is included in the kingdom and invited on this adventure. To do this, we cannot circle the wagons. But instead, what we are asking today on Commitment Sunday is that we all pitch in. Is that we all pitch in. Your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, your witness, it all matters now more than ever in the life of our church and in the world around us. You may not think that you have much to offer, but I want you to hear that every gift makes a difference. And as I say every week, your gifts come in many different forms, and we're grateful for that. Sometimes your gift is to show up and, and sing with gusto. And sometimes it is, like I said, to share food. Sometimes it is to um, share your time and a smile with greeting visitors who are using our building. Sometimes it's your elbow grease fixing things or beautifying the grounds around here. I could go on and on. These are ways that you pitch in. And it makes a difference, these gifts of your time and your service, of your talent. And certainly, uh, your, your financial gifts make a difference as well, every single one of them. The, the designated gift you give to a mission project, uh, the planned giving you include in your state planning and wills, the unexpected windfall that you get and want to share. <coughs> Sherry, <coughs> casino. <coughs> ah. And most importantly, the regular monthly offerings that you give to support our church's operating costs. All of these different financial gifts make a difference. It's pitching in. Uh, to do the work of God in and through our church. But really, it's these, these latter gifts that I mentioned, the monthly gifts that we've asked you to write on the pledge card for today, um, because that way our church staff and our church leaders can make a responsible budget for the year um, based on those estimates. Um, but whether it's your, your time or your talent, uh, or your treasure. Disciples, followers of Jesus, understand that these gifts all come from God. Everything that we have is not only from God, but really belongs to God. 
And so we are, we are giving back just a small part of what God has given to us when we give our time or our talent or our treasure. But, but this may, may be new or difficult to you, this idea of, of making a, a pledge or a commitment about monthly giving. It may be new or difficult to you uh, to think about offering uh, some of your time or stepping out in a new way to, to help or to pitch in around here. And I get it. I get it. Because you have been in in survival mode. Am I right? I've felt that way too these last few years. In survival mode. To try to protect what I've got. To protect um, and, and, and not put out there to be vulnerable. Whether that's that's meeting new people or, or taking a step of faith. In some ways, our, our church has been there as well, and all churches, really, with what's going on in our world and in our denomination. It's felt like survival mode. But friends, that is not the Jesus way. The Jesus way is to is to saddle up and step out in faith, to try new things, to reach new people, uh, to, to go into the wild blue yonder, if that's where Jesus leads us. This is the way of the resurrection. It's stepping out of the grave into the world again. Stepping out of our homes, stepping out of our church building, out into our neighborhood and community. That is the Jesus way. And it is the Pentecost way, the way of the Spirit. When Jesus uh, told them to, to go to Jerusalem and to wait for the Holy Spirit, he said, you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, your city, but also to every corner of the earth. Saddling up and going out, that's the Jesus way. But we've got to remember we do not do it alone. Never are we alone. We have one another, first of all. We are in this together. Um, I just had gotten uh, an email today from one of you, Rick, I see you sitting right here, and I loved your signature in the bottom, and it said, if you want to ride fast, go alone. If you want to ride far, go together. And that's what we're talking about, is going together. And most of all, we have Jesus, who is with us always. Uh, friends, every time we step out in faith, God sees it, God is pleased by it, and I believe God blesses it. And this is why Jesus spoke about uh, the faith of a mustard seed or the small bit of yeast or the gift of the widow's might, because every time we step out in faith together as his church, Jesus is there with us. What step of faith is God calling you to today? Is it in your personal life? Is it in the ministries of our church? Is it just in trusting God more with what you have and being willing to open yourself up again to what God can do in your life and in the world today? My friends, with Jesus by our side and the Holy Spirit to guide us, we can face every new and unknown challenge that is out there in the wild blue yonder. Let us pray. Oh God, we thank you for the, the bold and encouraging and mighty example of your son, Jesus who did not even let death keep him down. 
Lord, but by your power and your grace, you raised him from the grave, and he walked out of the grave, Lord, and back into the world to heal and to spread your grace. And he invited his disciples to do the same. And God, we hear that call for us to be bold and to be brave and to be faithful as well, just like the disciples, to overcome our, our fear and our tendency to circle the wagons. God, we, we sense and feel your Holy Spirit opening our hearts and opening our doors. And we thank you, O oh God, for this work in our lives and pray that you would continue to be with us. We pray, O oh God, uh, for all of the people that you will bring into our path here at Genesis. We pray for our community partners who are going to partner up with us. You know all of the, the kids and adults, God, all the leaders who are part of these community groups, and we ask that you would bless them. We pray for our conference and for your church everywhere, um, and for all of the um, Christians who partner with us and pray with us for this world. We pray that we, as your church, together, not just as Genesis, but all of us, Lord, would be a witness for your love and grace. And we pray all of these things now in your precious son's name. Amen. We are going to uh, read together um, a commitment, um, a litany of commitment in just a moment. And I'll invite you when we get there um, to stand. Uh, but I want to just share these words um, from a pastor, Reverend Peters, uh, who wrote this. And I believe that these words are so appropriate for us um, here at Genesis. Today is a day of celebration in the life of Genesis because today we remember that each and every one of us, young and old, is called by God to be stewards of justice, stewards of creation, stewards of peace, and stewards of the family of faith. Stewards give from all aspects of their life, as we accept this call to be stewards, we each become a living example of Christ's gospel, proclaiming faith through all we do and all we give. As it is written in 1 Peter, each one should use whatever gift he has received to serve others. And so, people of God, I ask you now, do you promise to enter into this covenant together to be God's stewards with all your mind and heart? If so, will you please say, I do. And would you please stand with me now and let us read together this commitment as we pray to God. Gracious God, you have made a world for us and given us incomparable gifts, air and water, family and friends, your steadfast love and forgiveness, your Son, Jesus the Christ, for all the gifts and wonders you have bestowed on us. We thank you and worship you with renewed gratitude. O oh God, you created us to love one another as Christ has loved us. We are concerned about all your children, those who live near us and those who live far away, we are eager to participate in the work of the whole church to further the ministry of the service of this congregation. We are called to be your stewards. We thoughtfully shoulder our personal share of responsibility and we pledge to witness the good news of Jesus, hearts, hands, and voices. We are confident in your love and care for us. We gladly give back to our gracious God our whole lives, our time, our talent, our financial resources. And let us pray together. O oh God, throughout the ages, 
You have challenged your people to step out in faith and follow you. You have put purpose and direction in the lives of your people. We have before us a new direction and a new purpose. We have set our feet on the pathway. Be our guide. Whisper in our ears when we need to make decisions. Hold us up if we start to stumble. May your Holy Spirit lead us joyful song and fill us with eager anticipation. You are our vision, O God. Lead us in our journey. Amen. If you would remain standing for our closing song, and if the Spirit should so lead you and you want to have some prayer at the altar at this time, you are always welcome to do that. Receive uh, now this um, blessing as we uh, go out. May God bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord um, lift his presence to you and give you his peace. Amen.